morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're here to celebrate my granddaddy, Vernell Clay. Yes, God. He was a fun, fun person, always having a good time. So I'm honored. Um, I will begin by reading the obituary. Vernell Clay was born on October 18, 1939, to the late Louis F. Clay Sr. and Emmy Robinson Clay. He was the ninth of 12 children, nine who preceded him in death. Josie Marvis, Bernice, Frances, Edward, Carroll, Donald Preston, and Harry. He professed his faith in Jesus Christ at an early age. He joined Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church under the leadership of the late Reverend John C. Clay, where he was a dedicated member. At Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, he served faithfully as a trustee and was always willing to serve in any capacity that was needed. He attended Detroit Public Schools. He later joined the United States Army and then joined the Army Reserve. He was united in holy matrimony to Norma Faye Clay on July 14, 1962. To this union, they were blessed with two children, Burnell Clay Jr. and Katrina Y. Clay. Vernell Clay Jr. preceded him in death on December 4th, 1974. Vernell loved working with his hands. He was known to build and design the best things from the ground up. If you've ever been to his house, then you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he was a dedicated worker at General Motors for over 30 years. He loved bowling. He was known as Clay to all of his bowling league members. Clay traveled all throughout the United States competing in bowling tournaments and always came home with trophies and cash prizes, which he shared graciously with all of us. Yes. Yes. He also enjoyed fishing and playing, what is it? Pinochle. Pinochle. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Apparently it's a card game. <laughs> I said, I ain't never seen my granddaddy play no cards. <laughs> Clay was dedicated to his family, his Cloverline family, and his community. You could ride by his home anytime and be greeted with the best music, the best barbecue, but most of all, the best love. Yes. Yes. He would go over and above all the time to help out anyone in need. His generosity and wisdom was heartfelt and always overflowing. Yes. His beautiful life will forever be cherished in the lives of his children, Eunice, Katrina, Burnell Love, and Burnell Wade. 12 grandchildren, Tommy, Tanisha, Lashana, Christian, Andrea, Rayvon, Monty, Deja, Janae, Tamia, Mariah, William, and Angel, two great-grandchildren, Layla and Santora, two brothers, Louis, Sandra Clay, and Willie Clay, and Aunt Annette Rankins of Mississippi, two uncles, a host of devoted nieces, nephews, cousins, and friends. Amen. Um, we have so many cards, so many acknowledgments, so many... Um, Thank yous, prayers, well wishes from social media family um, and all over. And our family would just like to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much. We so appreciate you. Um, it's way too many parts for me to read. Um, and now I will say my little parts. So, Ecclesiastics 3, starting at verse 1, says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time of to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. We look at so many graves and we always see a dash. From this to that, sunrise to sunset, we see a birth date, we see a, a death date. And the dash is so small, so minuscule, 
but it's often overlooked. But what you're doing in that little dash is so vital. It's the essence of who and what you are and who and what you were called to be. My friends and family have wondered how and why I'm so cool, calm, and collected during this time, especially because they know my granddaddy was my heart, it's my homie. I honor him and respect him. But I got this peace because Bernal Clay, he didn't just let his dash be ordinary. He definitely let it be extraordinary in all that he did. He was a leader. Had he been famous, some would have called him a radical philanthropist. Okay? He worked hard for everything he got, but most of all, he served. He served. I'm sure some thought when they met him, like, he is not even saved <laughs> because of some of the non-traditional things that he did. Yeah. But if you ever sat at his table, if you ever sat in his yard, if you ever sat in the front seat of his van, oh, baby, you had an encounter with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You gained some wisdom. You gained some knowledge. You gained some strength. You gained some hope. You gained some joy for the journey. So I ask you, what will you do with your dash? What will your dash say about you? My grandfather treated every person as if they were the president of the United States. He didn't care who you were. He made you feel so important. He pulled out of you things that you didn't even know was inside of you. And he did it all with class in this dope swag. <laughs> oh, I still listening to his music because he was not going to miss a beat. You was gonna have to pause if a good part came on. <laughs> he would feed the homeless right from his own kitchen or his barbecue grill. He would give you a job, and if you ain't know how to do something, he'd teach you how to do it, and then still pay you to do what he taught you how to do. Just to make sure that you were good, just to ensure that everybody was blessed and everybody had what they needed. His door was always open. You needed a place to stay. So again, I say, what will you do with your dash? It's not coincidence that when I was 14 years old, I happened to be sitting at that glass kitchen table. How many sat at that table? <laughs> Who sat at that table? On 13960 Cloverline. <laughs> and my granddaddy said to me, he said, Rockefeller. That's what he always called me, Rockefeller. He said, Rockefeller. You are called. Don't worry about what anyone else says. Follow what's inside of you because you are going to bless so many people with your words, with your smile. He told me that souls would be saved and that kids will walk in purpose because of what was put inside of me. So 10 years later, I discovered that our home church, the foundation in which we stand, Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church, was founded on April 17, 1961, which happens to be the exact day I was born, 26 years later. I know my granddaddy worked hard and he retired. I had the privilege of enjoying him all throughout my adolescent years and my youthful years after his retirement. So I got to see him live, and baby, did he live. Listen, he traveled, he enjoyed all his hobbies, his interests, and he always walked in purpose. So in closing, I am remembering everything that my granddaddy did in all of his seasons while he lived. And in each season, God helped him, and God is gonna help us as well. Some things will be easy, some things will be hard. We gonna stumble, we gonna yeah. fall, we gonna yeah. cry, we gonna laugh, yeah. we gonna have good times, we gonna have bad times. Yeah. But fulfilling what is inside of you is the essence of your existence. Yes. Yes. May your dash count. Because yes. my grandfather's, he is definitely did. And I am going to make sure that myself and my siblings and his other grandchildren and nieces and nephews and cousins and family, I'm going to make sure that we are all embracing every moment and that we are all creating a purpose so that our dash can count. Amen. Amen. Granddaddy, I love you. Yes. In my heart, Rockefeller for life. <laughs>